Indeed. You might say that consciousness is at once the most familiar thing in the world mm -hmm. and the most mysterious. Consciousness is what we start with. When it comes to knowing the world and looking out at the world, consciousness is what we have first. Mm -hmm. Everything else is secondary. I know that I exist. I know that I'm conscious. I think you probably exist, and, you, and there's, there's, there's a physical world out somewhere behind that. So in terms of what's familiar to me, gosh, consciousness is number one. But then in terms of accommodating that within a scientific worldview, it's fascinating that we've actually turned out to make much more progress on understanding such distant phenomena as subatomic particles or distant stars not to mention the phenomena of chemistry, of mm -hmm. biology, and of life, than we have of understanding our own consciousness. That's, it almost sticks out like a sore thumb in the scientific picture. How is it that all these physical processes in the world should be, accompanied, should be associated with conscious experiences? And that's mm -hmm. a problem which science, despite the familiarity of the phenomenon, has been almost silent on. Well, to me, it's a paradox that you can't, to my way of thinking, you can't have science without consciousness. Right. And, and yet scientists, many of whom would maintain that they can arrive, they expect that they could arrive at a pretty complete picture of the universe that doesn't involve consciousness. Right, indeed. So to do any consciousness, you've got to start, to do any science, you've got to start with the conscious mind. Mm -hmm. All the fundamental data we deal with are data of our experience. But it's interesting, science is so hooked on the idea of being, um, to, to, to do, we're so hooked on the idea that to do proper science, you have to be objective. Mm -hmm. You have to eliminate anything subjective from the picture to, to, to build up a scientific framework. Yeah. If every last remnant of consciousness, of subjective experience in those data gets eliminated and we push our theory, you give a scientific theory, for example, of heat or of light, and you give a theory of these uh, physical phenomena of you know molecules moving fast in a in a hot object mm -hmm. one gives a theory of everything it seems all the objective aspects of heat and one leaves out actually the very central subjective aspect of hotness and now, science, hot, yeah. science doesn't actually give a theory of the conscious feeling of hotness so science is actually built up on the idea that one has to eradicate the subjective to give these objective theories mm -hmm. if so then when it comes to when it comes to that works for a lot of phenomena when it comes to giving a theory of consciousness itself, yeah. which is the paradigmatically subjective mm -hmm. phenomenon. It seems that it may be that the methods of science have to be expanded. Well, let's take this as an example because almost every uh, science student will learn that we have heat sensors right. that are part of our nervous system. They become activated. They send neural impulses up from the sensor along the nerves into the brain, and and th therefore we feel uh, or perceive that that heat, you're saying that doesn't really explain it. 